And now I request respected Rashtrapati ji, Shri Pradam Mukherjee, to address the 27th Indian Engineering Congress. Good morning. Sri Asal Garg, President, the Institution of Engineering India, Sri S.S. Rathod, President-elect, Mr. Adil M.M.J. al Kharafi, President, World Federation of Engineering Organization, Sri R.N. Rajput, Chairman, Organizing Committee, and Chairman, Delhi State Center, Major General, R.K. Shanan, Secretary, and Director General, the Institution of Engineers India, Hologwell, Secretary, Delhi State Center, Excellencies, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, Indeed, it's a privilege for me to be present on the occasion of the inaugural program of 27th Indian Engineers Congress organized by the Institution of Engineers India. The Institution of Engineers India was formed in 1920 in response to a felt need for an institution that would serve the cause of advancement of engineering and technology in India. In 1935, King George V accorded it the Royal Charter, and since then, engineers attached to these institutions are known as chartered engineers. Prior to the All India Council of Technical Education being given the statutory powers in 1987 of regulating engineering and technical education in the country, the institution of engineers performed this task under the Royal Charter. The AMIE examination, equivalent to degree course in engineering, was also initiated by the Institute as early as in 1928. For in-service technical professionals wanting to pursue further studies and acquire an engineering degree while continuing with their existing professions. Ladies and gentlemen, during the next three days of this Congress, there shall be substantive discussions on many facets of engineering based on the central theme, engineering for sustainable development and inclusive growth. The scientific and technical community shall eagerly await the results of these deliberations and I'm sure this shall go a long way in enabling movement towards government's vision of fostering inclusive growth. As we all know, India is both to be an economic power. In terms of purchasing power parity, the size of our economy is the third largest in the world. The substantial growth rate that our country has achieved over the last few years is second only to China in the world. During the period 2003-04 to 2010-11, we have had an annual GDP growth rate more than 8% on as many as six occasions. Though the growth rate was subdued after 2010-11, mainly because of the international financial crisis and later on due to the Eurozone crisis. The pressures from the global economic meltdown, India's economy has been more resilient than most of the other emerging economies in the world. A growth rate of 9% per year has been envisaged during the 12th five-year plan period of 2012 to 17. Such scales of economic expansion need 
several enabling factors, prominent among them being education. We have now, over time, created an infrastructure of good educational institutions for imparting quality education at all levels. In the higher education sector, India is endowed with 659 degree awarding institutions and 33,023 colleges. Number of Indian Institutes of Technology has increased from 7 in 2006-7 to 15 in 2011-12. Enrollment to higher education institutions in the country has similarly increased from 1 crore 39 lakhs in 2006-7 to 2 crore 18 lakhs in 2011-12. Engineering comprised 13% of the total enrollment in 2006-7. This figure has since increased from 13% to 25%. The growth rate of enrollment in engineering was close to 25% annually during the 11th plan period and is the highest for any individual field of study. Several steps have been taken to bring about an improvement in the quality of the technical education, particularly engineering. Virtual labs developed for science and engineering are being rolled out. The government with the support of the World Bank has been conducting a three-phase program for technical education quality improvement. While the first phase from 2002 to 2009 covered 127 engineering institutions, the second phase from 2010 to 2014 would cover about 190 more engineering institutions. To achieve truly sustainable growth, however, poverty eradication is of utmost importance. Poverty and a degraded environment are closely interrelated, especially where people depend for their livelihood primarily on the natural resource base of their immediate environment. Removal of poverty is therefore a prerequisite for the protection of the environment. Appropriate climate responsive technologies are accordingly required to provide relief to the economically weaker sections of society. Several traditional practices that are sustainable and environment friendly continue to be a regular part of the lives of people in developing countries. These need to be encouraged rather than replaced by more modern but unsustainable practices and technologies. Technologies exist though through which substantial reduction in consumption of resources is possible. Efforts to identify, evaluate, introduce and use these technologies must be made. The integration of agriculture with land and water management and with ecosystem conservation is essential for both environmental sustainability and agricultural production. An environmental perspective must guide the evaluation of all development projects, recognizing the role of natural resources in local livelihoods. Mechanisms must simultaneously be put in place to make available to developing countries the latest technologies at a reasonable cost. Technology transfer must be informed by an understanding of its implications in the social, economy, and environmental contexts of the recipient societies. Where possible, existing local technologies must be upgraded and adapted to make them more efficient and useful. I hope the Institution of Engineers India, which is the largest body of engineers and technologists in our country, will initiate steps
to achieve these goals in consultation with all stakeholders. With these words, I have the pleasure of formally inaugurating the 27th Engineering Congress and wish you Godspeed and best of success in your deliberations. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>